Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma. I'm Nick and our topic this week is how to get unstuck. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, if you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Hello, Kizma. Hello. What's up? What's up? We're talking about getting unstuck. Unstuck. When was the last time you were stuck? Stuck is in happens in degrees. There's like <laughs> degrees li- of stuck. Yeah, there's like little stuck. Degree. Okay, degrees of stuckness. Degrees of stuck. There are totally degrees of stuckness. I, I guess there's anyway. degrees of just about everything except self realization. You either are or you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like little stucks. There's big stucks. There's all kinds of things. But we're gonna kind of deconstruct that. I think throughout this episode, is there today. a myth of being stuck? Um, is there, are there misunderstandings of being stuck? Well, I think there's a lot of misunderstandings around it. And I think there's, uh, it's a vague conversation that mm-hmm. needs much more specificity. It's a, it's an easy out. Oh, I'm just stuck. I'm just stuck. I'm, I'm stuck. stuck. I'm not going to do stuff today. I'm just stuck. I'm yeah. feeling stuck. Yeah. And so that's, that's kind of what I, I think why it's important to talk about mm-hmm. this is to bring a little bit more clarity to the conversation of stuck, because it's really easy to say that of like, <laughs> I'm stuck and like, well, what does that even mean? You know, have I ever said to you, I'm stuck? See, when I hear I'm stuck, I feel like the car's in the ditch and it's not moving. That's when the last time I feel like I was stuck was when I slid on ice on New Year's Day back in Detroit. You were stuck. I remember the that. The car yeah. was stuck. You totally handled that police officer in such I a did. beautiful and graceful way. I did. Um, so have I ever heard you say that? Uh, I don't think it's something boy, I use. I I, That's not much in your language, Seth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the some of the myths around it are... Well, the still thing. I'm still. I'm stuck. still. That's a word. That's yeah. a word. Run that word out, everyone. Avoid yeah. using still. Yeah. And so the, the biggest, probably the biggest thing that I see when people say I'm stuck, which I actually hear it a lot, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. uh, as we bring people in through different, uh, mm-hmm. you know, into programs and into things like that, I, I'm, I'm the the usherer in chief, you know, mm-hmm. of helping, you know, mm-hmm. helping people to take a step and find a way in, right? Uh, which is really fun and really important. And that's one of the most common, one of the common thing, I wouldn't say the most uh, common, but one absolutely. of the common things I hear, I'm stuck. And okay, great. Like, and I know that in that conversation, in their head, mm-hmm. there's a lack of clarity. They feel stuck. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, it's like a feeling, but it's also mm-hmm. a mental process. So I both agree. of those are kind of jammed up. Yeah. I get a lot of people that come to have just a, a session to see if they're going to work with me and feeling stuck. I feel stuck. I feel stuck. That's, yeah. Those are words. Yeah. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. And then, and there's more to the story. So mm-hmm. tell me about stuck. Like that's the first thing. Their definition. The first thing that we're going to talk about is what is stuck, you know, in any of those conversations, like what is that to you? So um, tell me more about stuck. And if you're at home just listening to this, or maybe you're just kind of following along as you listen in your car to this podcast, well, think for yourself, if there's an area in your life that you feel stuck, or if you find yourself using that word or something similar or mm-hmm. akin to that, well, okay, great. Where are you? Like, what does that mean to you mm-hmm. specifically? Well, I just you know, like none of that vague stuff. <laughs> right. Because that is one of the things cleaning up your language around it is one of the things that will actually help you to get unstuck. First and foremost is to really clearly articulate what is happening. Well, and according to universe or dictionary.com, <laughs> university.com, I'm sure they study this there. Um, simple past tense of stick. (laughs) So like the next time everyone, let's just wrap up the podcast right now. The next time you feel stuck, just be like, not really, because that's a simple past tense and past participle of stick. (laughs) Done. All set. No one's stuck. Okay. Unless you're really sticking to 
quicksand or something. No, but seriously, I get it. Yeah. It's a feeling. I think it's a very strong feeling. Well, I think it's a feeling and I also think it's a mental pattern that mm-hmm. people get into. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's the first thing is, is bringing to bring more clarity to the situation is you really do have to do some inquiry or self inquiry. If you can do that yourself, great. Uh, I highly recommend speaking right. to somebody who is skilled at helping people get unstuck, you know, or helping people bring clarity to that. Right. Uh, which is something that we do, you know, through our coaching practices and, and all sorts of things. So in, in another area of this specificity helps to hone it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's another area where people just feel they get stuck and then everything becomes stuck. True. So it's like, I can't, you know, where are you stuck everywhere? Mm. Okay. Are you constipated? Is that what you're telling me? Right. You, it's that question. You know, is that so? Is that breathing? true? Like, yeah. w- it, it, you know, are you, like it's, what's exactly like, is everything, everything stuck? Everything's not stuck in your life. Right. And that I think, I mean, this is useful for so many, so many things that we just randomly say like, oh, it's never working. Nothing's working. Exactly. I think that people equate that with feeling stuck and like, really nothing's (laughs) Nothing's working. Your heart's working. (laughs) Your heart's working. You're breathing. You just blew your nose. You had a bite of food. You chewed, you swallowed. Things are working. Your phone's working. And your phone's (laughs) working. Your internet's working. Yeah. So this is true. Like this is what we do as humans. Like all of a sudden we put this huge like layer and slather of nothing is working. Everything is stuck, et cetera. And actually, if we really look at it, there's probably a greater percentage of things that are going just as they should in miracle ways than not. Yeah. Yeah. It's a classic. Mm -hmm. One thing becomes everything. That's the only thing that gets your attention and everything becomes that. And it actually, that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where everything's stuck, everything's stuck. Well, the more that you say that and ignore the things that are that are actually moving and working mm-hmm. in the right direction, well, then those things start to grind to a halt too. Right. And then you really do wind up in quite a bind. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I guarantee there's a way out of it because there are little bits and pieces that can move. And well, that's, that's that maneuvering that becomes really important. So back to your point about the language is it's just lazy. It that's is lazy Lazy language. language. And that is something that really needs to be cleaned up. Yeah. When we clean up the language, just like Florence Gavilshin says, your word is your wand. Yeah. So when we clean up the language, it's like a little instant miracle of things really do shift. Yeah. Because that's what's going on inside our mind and inside our whole being. Yeah, I love that. I think that's really important. Start by cleaning up the language. Cleaning up the language and getting more specific, Mm -hmm. you know. And because this kind of stuckness, not workiness, that those sorts of beliefs, energies, emotions, when someone continues to say that focus on it through this law of mind action that we've talked about in some of our podcasts, energy goes where thought flows. Things expand that we think about. Yes. Things expand that we think about. So if we are constantly thinking about how stuck we are, that that perceived stuckness, that feeling of not growing, not changing, not moving expands rather than the the movement that we actually want. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. So let's talk about that. What are some of the tiny shifts that our listeners we all can take to start that movement of the wheel. Well, that's one of the reasons that gratitude is effective to help people get unstuck. Mm. Right. You see how they make a practice of gratitude and then you start to see what's actually working. Yeah. Right. So, so that's a, that's why that works. And that's why people recommend that it doesn't have to be a gratitude practice so much as it is, you know, but that's a heart centered thing. It's a beautiful thing. It doesn't even have to be a gratitude journal. Yeah, it doesn't at all. It's just an awareness. It's a perception, right. An awareness. Yeah. Um, But shifting that sometimes I think when you do feel stuck, because I think how I see that really express in people is, when they get stuck, they also get really drained of energy mm. because they're frustrating. They're exhausting themselves, kind of, you know, working against the grain, which mm-hmm. we'll talk about in a little bit. But but they're exhausting themselves in various ways. And then they don't then the language gets lazy. Yes. right, Because it's like you don't want to put forth that effort. And those sorts of little practices become actually kind of difficult for people, you know, like, oh, I'm going to do a gratitude journal or whatever. It's like, Mm -hmm. okay, well, there's a reason for that, right? Mm -hmm. It's instilling a new habit. 
Um, and, and like I'm saying, I'm not saying that's the only way I think gratitude journals are super cool. If that works for you. Awesome. But like you said, it it is really have to be starting to just pay Mm -hmm. attention. Like when the situation isn't working. All right. Well, what is working? Right. Cause that's where, that's one of the places where people get stuck in a perspective. Right. You know, which is interesting. That's exactly what uh, Donnie Epstein talks about in somatorespiratory integration. And he has those 12 stages Mm -hmm. of healing. One of them, Mm -hmm. I think it's stage three, is like you're stuck. And he says it very specifically, stuck in a perception. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. So like we talked about with the ultimate life tool, one of the things that it tells you is, is what's your perspective on life? Right. Do you see what's working first or you see what's not working first? Or are you more neutral in the center? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. None of them is better than the other, mm-hmm. but when you're stuck in one side, yes. then you, that's part of that's that is stuck. You're stuck in a perspective, right? And you're not you're either seeing what's working and you're deluding yourself and not seeing what's not working, or you're seeing what's not working and getting frustrated and making that everything, right? Right. Or if you're dead center in that flat line, it's just like apathetic. You know, you're just checked out. So really, we have to get honest with ourselves. Yeah. If we're getting honest, we will not have a lazy language. If we're honest, we're going to see not just what isn't working like we want, but we're going to see what is working. Yes. You have to choose to see. And and I think it's important to see both. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 If we don't see what isn't working, then we don't go on a path to adjust it and fix it. But when that's all consuming and when we're in this belief that, Everything is stuck. Yeah. It's really, really heavy. You just, you're like you said before, you're just going to create mm-hmm. exactly more yeah. of that. So we have to get honest. What's another thing that we can do to. Well, the clarity, the honesty, um, and honesty, there's a few different levels to that. You mm-hmm. know, it's not just the uh, truly objective perspective of what is happening in the situation, but it's also the honesty about yourself and the role that you've played in that. Like, what right. are the choice? What are the choices that you've made? in order to create this situation. Tough one. Yeah, it is. It but is. it's a good one. It's, a, it's, it's so necessary. It's the game changer of all game changers. And I think it's important to say when you're having that honest conversation, you know, it's like we've talked about so many times on our podcast, what did I do to create this? Why did I why did I attract this? Why am I creating it? Those conversations, those questions aren't to be asked to make ourselves feel badly or guilty, or full of shame, they're simply bringing us information that is vital information. Right. And the more objective we are looking at that information, the more we can put it to use. Yeah. Yeah. And when I find myself in a situation, I'm not sure I usually use, I don't think I really use the word stuck that much. I think I'm just, it's in my brain because I hear it, Mm. Um, but it's not, I don't, it's not something that I really use, but when I do feel that way around Mm -hmm. something, then that is definitely I don't have to look too hard to find the choices that I've made. Mm-hmm. They're pre- they're probably sitting below the surface. Pizza. Yeah, I've been deluding myself. <laughs> Beer. Right, and ignoring it. I've been deluding myself and ignoring it, and it's sitting right there. You know, it's right. just like, just turn the other way and yeah. just turn the other way. And, and as soon as you start to ask those questions, it becomes very obvious. It becomes obvious, and then you're like, okay, I'm hashtag human. Now pivot the choices. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So those things are... Mm-hmm. On like ruthless honesty with yourself, true true objectivity with the situation and right. that clarity, and then really cleaning up the language around it. And another thing that people talk about, I think, is uh, it shows up. I think on some different in some different ways, but it's uh, it's decluttering. Oh yes, okay. And oh, that's so in the physical physical representation of a very messy, cluttery home. Yeah, can make one feel heavy. Yeah. And sticking around. Yeah. Yeah. Decluttering. Because that's, I mean, just energetically speaking, all that stuff sits around and Mm -hmm. it's not in an orderly fashion. And so that's really just collecting stag, it's stagnating energy. It totally is. can't flow. That's, that's one of the reasons for feng shui, you know, is making sure that there's a clean flow of energy in your Mm -hmm. spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, You need that in yourself too. Uh, So it could be an external thing where you just need to like, go freaking clean out, you know, clean out a closet or straighten out your desk or whatever that is. Um, but it's also the internal thing. 
Yes. It's decluttering the inside. Absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, I've been thinking about this. Uh, we've had Elizabeth Yelto on the show a couple mm-hmm. times and, and one of her topics and something that keeps coming back around in her life that I so appreciate is unconsuming. Yeah. So maybe we'll do yeah, a podcast yeah. episode or we gotta get her back on. I'll take and mm-hmm. run with it. But, mm-hmm. um, but unconsuming. Yeah, it, totally. It is so powerful. And what I mean by that is, okay, so think about all the information that we're exposed to. It's so insane. much. I, I mean, they're saying now we are exposed to more information in one day, one 24 hour period than our parents or grandparents were in a year. Yeah. And it's probably going to go up to a lifetime. Like it is, there's so much coming in. So we've got that to declutter. And I feel like the, the external decluttering though, kind of puts the human in motion too. It does. Yeah. Right. So just the does. act of like, okay, I'm going to clean this corner up. I'm going to try. It's good. It's movement. Yeah. If, if that's the place where you go first. Mm-hmm. Okay. But some people get stuck in their heads of just like, I don't even know where to start. Exactly. I, I don't even know where to start. You with start this. somewhere by picking up something. Well, they do. Yeah. And unconsuming can actually be one of the ways because what happens when people get stuck is they check out mm-hmm. and then they just, they just, they're consuming. They're in yeah. consumer mode of scrolling through Facebook, binging in Netflix of like whatever that thing going is. Going shopping. Going shopping. Eating chocolate cake. Yeah. I just, <laughs> it could be, I mean, it shows up in so many different ways, but you're basically in consumer mode. Right. Okay. And one of the, that, what that does to the brain is it overwhelms it with information and then you're okay. So it, then it becomes a downward spiral sitting on the couch because I don't feel like doing anything and I don't know where to start and everything's stuck and it's not going to make any difference anyway. And so I'm just going to fill my brain up with all this other stuff. And then your brain is already processing all that and all the new information coming in. It's like mm-hmm. stuck, 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 stuck. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, it's rough and it's just a lot for the brain. So then that further depletes energy. Right. Because your brain takes a lot of resources to run that piece right. of equipment. Right. And it will drain you physically. Right. So unconsuming is actually a really powerful I like that. kind of thing that you can do. Turn on, trust me, if there's something that happens in the world, you, you heard it from here and, and I've done this many times, you can trust me. If something happens in the world, you'll know. Okay, If something that you really need to know happens, you'll know. But if you were to um, shut off all the notifications on your phone, except for your, uh, except for your, you know, obviously your phone and your text, Mm -hmm. maybe your text message or something like that, the ways that you communicate with people, you're outgoing, so to speak. If you were to only look at your email twice a day, uh, if you were, and then just handle what needs to be handled, if you were to not watch any TV at all. No, then we'd miss OA. You can always step back in and watch it. Yeah, that's true. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so you're not saying forever. No, not forever. Mm-hmm. But it's like a give yourself a set period of time. I recommend uh, I recommend at least a week. Yeah, and preferably a month. It's like a complete detox. Yeah, of the clutter, of the stuckness, of the stickiness. You'll feel amazing. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. you you really will feel amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm getting inspired. I think I might do one you might myself. Do. Okay. It's tough though. I'm into those Harry Potter books. <laughs> Listen to him <laughs> preaching. He can't even follow his own rules. It's I, I'd have. To I like, would not say you're stuck right now though. You've been working pretty hard. But l- just kind of go back though. I, I want to insert something because this declutter is is really it's real. a big deal. Yeah, there is a difference, and you've heard us mention the Ultimate Life Tool, which is created by Dr. Zana Hackett of the U Institute, and we've got a special going on for the podcast listeners. So go to the show notes, and you'll be able to take this tool and have an amazing assessment with Nick or I. It's a very deep dive. Um, however, there's a difference between someone who's just got all this sticky clutter and someone who lives with more chaos. Some people can live with messy rooms and chaos, like my daughter. That's due to their alchemy. Some people need it very neat and put together like me for them to breathe. It's due to the alchemy. So it's not going to make someone stuck, unstuck. It's just who they are. It's, yeah. It's what's orderly for mm-hmm. you. It's orderly for, yeah. but even some, and even someone who's living with the chaos, if there's that sticky kind of clutter, if there's stuff that hasn't moved, because even the messy rooms, people can move their stuff around. They can find like, I'll, I'll watch 
Zoe just find like one little piece of paper in a pile because she knows where it is. Yeah. That's yeah. just different. So I just wanted to clarify that because I think it is important. Different people live in a flow of different things. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, it is important. Mm-hmm. It is, it's, I'm not saying, thanks for clarifying that. Is I, I'm not trying to say like, you have to have like this pristine, I, I'm not like that. No, I have not. orderly mm-hmm. piles in mm-hmm. places. Mm-hmm. I know where to find mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm not the neatest person in the world. Um, You're pretty darn neat. I'm pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. I have, do have the gold, mm-hmm. but, um, but regardless, mm-hmm. not everybody's like that. And that doesn't work. It'll super stress some people out. It you would know? stress so, some like, people don't out. Don't do that. And there's just, however, when there's just a bunch of stuff that hasn't been moved and, and there's hoarding going on and there's information in the brain that's going, it's time to clear it out. Yeah. What's that rule if you haven't worn it in two a, years? Two, well, is it a, a year? year. It, it's, I usually go with a year and a half. Oh. Just because of the seasonal thing. Okay. You know, but yeah, chances are if you haven't worn it in a year, you're not going to... I always say that when we move, if there's a box that has not been opened in a year, we don't need that. Yeah. Like it's going out so. unless it's marked taxes or something important. <laughs> we haven't missed it. Yeah. I love that you do that, actually. It's really... It inspires <laughs> it's from me. From all the years in Hong Kong, there was no room. There was no room <laughs> to have any like piece of paper extra. None. Oh, uh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate it though. Cause I, I won't, I won't always take the initiative to mm-hmm. do that. And then every once in a while I get inspired. I remember one time you left for New York and, and the moment you were gone, I was like, I'm cleaning this place up. Man. <laughs> and I just started like, I started straightening everything. You remember you came back and yeah. all the books under the coffee yeah, table were like, all like very orderly. <laughs> I just got inspired. That's great. Um, but you get, you tend to like, you really stay on top of that. And I, I really appreciate good. that. Yeah. So that decluttering is really big. It's internal. And the best way to start to declutter internal is just number one, just shut off the flow. Right. right? Like stop. Yeah. Stop. Hard stop, people. <laughs> really, really turn off that flow of constant, <laughs> constant information coming yeah. in. Yeah. And be super judicious because, you know, when you think about food, like when people think about, oh, I want to eat a clean diet. Okay, well, that's awesome. And if all of the thoughts and the information that you're consuming is toxic, you go Absolutely. and eat the cake, man, because yeah. <laughs> the toxic <laughs> thoughts and all that other stuff is like way more, way more damaging than, true. you know, some white sugar. I, I think that's a really great way to look at it. Our diet, we know it's tangible. We're looking, is there, are there greens? Are there not greens? Is sugar, whatever. Our thoughts, I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, are we putting fresh broccoli into our mind or is it processed flour and sugar? Yeah. And when you, st- so very sticky, the sugar and the flour in the thoughts and in the body, very sticky. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, very much so. Uh, so yeah, cleaning up your diet can definitely help you to get unstuck. You know, that's your physical container, right. getting some extra, starting to make a point with exercise, but it's not, it's not, it's for you. Like it's for each individual. I've met people and worked with people who have really been super physically active, like overly physically mm-hmm. active and still feel like super, super stuck Right like there. They have other things to work on. So it's, if you know that that's an area for you that you've been neglecting, right. Got to move. Yes. Got to move. And movement in other ways. So when one feels stuck and maybe it's career, maybe it's relationship, mm-hmm. um, maybe it's like diet, whatever, take, I, I call it like a pattern interrupt. You know, what's the pattern interrupt of movement that changes things up to then create that openness or that shift of perspective or just like a new infusion of energy? Right. Those things can really help to just break up that break up, break it up. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, super. super that helpful. could be a simple. You're going to take it like if you're driving to work, you take a different route. Yeah. Um, if you're doing the same thing in your relationship every night, sitting down watching TV, etc., take a walk. If your partner won't go with you, take a walk by yourself. Yeah. You know, if you're reading like or watching the news or whatever change it up. Don't watch the news. Read a book. Yeah. Read a book. You know, I highly if, recommend the Harry Potter series. Harry Potter series. <laughs> if you uh, might as well put that in the show as if I'm sure everyone has read Harry Potter, but if you're working, I, I know it's true. If you're working on your business and you're just like, nothing's working, nothing's working, change your space, go to a coffee shop, have a conversation with someone, change the schedule where maybe you take like a Monday morning off 
And then you have some space to digest and think and all those things we've got to pattern interrupt. Yeah. Yeah. When I get stuck writing copy, that's one of the things that I do mm-hmm. is I go to go to a coffee right. shop. Um, the caffeine doesn't hurt, uh, but it's, <laughs> it's gen, it's not that though. I go and change of atmosphere. It's really just, yeah. yeah. It. And it's having movement around yes. me. that, you know, movement centers high for right. me, not super high, but it's mm-hmm, up there for, mm-hmm, as one of my, mm-hmm. uh, communication centers. So when I'm around an, an environment that's more moving and not so static, that can be really helpful for me to just make sure that all the wheels are turning, you know, and get out of that stuckness of, oh, I can't see past this thing. Exactly. So the biggest, I think the biggest topic that we're really talking about, and it's really culminating this is, is you got to do your own inquiry and you have to know who you are, Mm. right? That's really important uh, to actually know who you are, how you are, what you are, how you function, you know, all, all those things are super important. And that is what will keep you from getting into those stagnant routines, Mm -hmm. right? So even when somebody keeps a, like a more rigid routine for themselves, that doesn't mean that they're stagnant in that or stuck in that routine. That's what that structure is something that some people need. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. That structure in that order. Uh, And there's, there's more to it, you know? So it's making sure that you really know what makes you tick. Mm-hmm. Right. Know your likes, know your dislikes, know what puts you on edge, know what makes you uncomfortable and be willing to get uncomfortable if it's in a good direction, if it's that kind of uncomfortableness that is going to help you expand. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the little ways, this is something that I've seen that is surprising to me is like one of the ways that I personally have uh, found some stagnation and seen it also in a lot of people is where you complete a task or a goal right after that. Ah, like a letdown. It's not like a letdown. It's like sometimes you don't even realize that you did it and mm-hmm. then you kind of drift off into never, never land. Oh. So in a daily kind of perspective, I, I'm be- much better about it than, than before, but I was mm-hmm. into a pattern a while back where I noticed myself doing this, where I would, I'd have my task list and then mm-hmm. I'd finish a task, which sometimes would be like a kind of a bigger task mm-hmm. or a bigger project, finish it. And then all, then all of a sudden I'm off into like, I've got a few more things on my list, but then I'm off in like never land of like, you know, scrolling some Facebook or something like that. So it's like the thing got done Mm. and then there was lingering. And then you put processed flour into your brain. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what I was Mm -hmm. doing. And that's one, that's one place where, where it can get stuck. It's like, it really does. If you want to stay unstuck, especially in like a daily flow, it's, Next, 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 next. Keep and it's going. not the pedantic of like, oh, right. I got to get to the next thing. It's like, great, that's complete. Flow. Cut the cord next. Yeah. And then that keeps the flow going. So yeah. you, you be way more keeps, efficient with your time. Right. And it keeps the mind clean and clear. Yeah. Instead of inserting these random things. I mean, I get that sometimes we got to get up and stretch and move and, and just like you said, if you're stuck on copy or something, you go somewhere else, but it's just staying on point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I caught myself almost doing it today as a matter of fact, Uh-oh. where I was, uh, you know, I, I do some of the, the back end stuff for the website and how the, all the stuff integrates is all mm-hmm. this. It's, I don't, I'm surprised I know as much about it as I do, but, um, anyway, there is an intricate in- integration thing I was working on. I was putting it together. I got it done. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, kind of on to the next thing, but it wasn't the next thing on my list. It was some other like weird little thing. And then I was off down some weird trail and I caught myself. I was like, Ooh, I know what you're doing. Like you were not going to do that and, and then cut the cords and get back mm-hmm, on it. You know, I broke mm-hmm. it up and got back to what was actually important. Mm-hmm. But that's a thing where people like, okay, that big thing's done, that pressure's off. And then it's like off into all these yeah. other weird little trails and that's not productive. Right. Right. And another way, another common area that I see people get stuck is when they hit a goal and they didn't realize that they hit it. Aww. And then they're like, just kind of off and it's like, well, where am I going? Like, what am I doing? Uh, Could be like an income goal yeah. or like I said, I was going to do this thing, you know, and I finally did it. And then what? Yeah. So there isn't really a purpose driven ideal. I mean, for me, the overall arching way to not be stuck is to have a purpose driven ideal. Yes. Yes. If that ideal is higher than you, it's something that will serve humanity, 
chances are we're always going to get out of bed and get to it and move and think in a way that is helpful and create in a way that is helpful. Yeah. But if you lose connection with that throughout, yeah. you'll, that'll, that energy will drop. Right. Right. And, and for many people, I'm one of these people is those measurable goals are along the way, like those benchmarks mm-hmm. of like, well, what's the next thing that I can see? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause sometimes mm-hmm. that ideal is and, and awesome that it is lofty, like your ideal and your goal for life should be something that is like big and audacious right. and something really amazing, like something that inspires you. Right, for sure. Right, and scares you a little. Um, so great. And it's difficult sometimes to see all the way there. Right. So I'm a person who I think functions a little bit better with smaller goals in mind. I need to get to this benchmark. Yeah. Okay. And so you get to that benchmark and then if you don't, if you're not paying attention, you land there and then, and then you're, you can kind of circle for a little mm-hmm, bit of mm-hmm. like, well, okay, well I did that. Like now what? Yeah, so it's, it's really being aware of, oh, great. Now what's next? Okay, good. I have one, one more I want to offer and that is to go help someone. Yeah. Because again, it, it just, it involves everything you move you have a pattern interrupt, you're being of service, which means you're not putting processed flour into your brain. (laughs) And it's just like, there's a connection to another person. There's an emotional connection. There's just like, there's a purpose. Yeah. And, and it's such a great way to get re-inspired and just feel like, okay, let, let me do this for someone else. And just to get over ourselves and out of ourselves. Yeah. That's, I'm so glad you brought this up. It wasn't on my radar, but that's Mm -hmm. awesome. And it's Mm -hmm. so appropriate. Yeah. Not too long ago, I was uh, I was working on um, a project that was really stressing me out. We'll share about it someday on the <laughs> on the episode when it's not like, sure. I want to know when it's behind when it's fully fully resolved. But um, anyway, I was getting kind of wrapped up in it and getting kind of stressed out by it. And I went to the store and I I bought you know a whole bunch of stuff for peanut butter and jellies and some other mm-hmm. things. And I just went home and I made like as many sandwiches as I could make out of that. And I went and found some some people who needed it and gave it to them. That's a great, great way to and serve. I don't say, I certainly don't say that to brag. I don't mm-hmm. really like talking about that, but at the end of the day, it's like, it's do it, you know, mm-hmm. go mm-hmm. be of service and, right. and make and making some sandwiches and going and putting them in the hands of somebody that needs that. So helpful. It is a, it really is a game. I mean, changer. it can be that it can also be, you might have a colleague who's trying to finish a project. You might have a friend who's moving. Ha- like, there's always someone to serve. Yeah. Yeah. It's picking up the phone sometimes mm-hmm. when you, mm-hmm. making when, a call, when you, you're making a call or picking mm-hmm. up the phone when somebody calls you. Oh, right. You know, which <laughs> I stuff, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I know. I, I have strict challenges with that myself sometimes. Uh, but I remember one time I was, um, you know, to that end, I, I was out surfing and I got stung by a stingray. Oh, I remember that. And that's, kind of sucked like it was like yeah. it's like if for anybody who's wondering what that's like that unstuck you it's like a really bad bee sting yeah you know, that bleeds and i was half thinking about like oh it's no big deal i'll just stay out and then i saw the blood and i was oh. like oh you know maybe i maybe not <laughs> so i went in anyway and it did start to really hurt like uh-huh. it was quite painful and and one of the remedies for that is to go soak it in the hottest water that you can possibly uh, soak okay. it in so I'm sitting there and my foot's really hurting and I've got my foot in the bathtub as hot as it can be. And my phone rings. And normally under these circumstances, I would be like, yeah, no. Like uh-huh. I, and But I did. For whatever reason, I picked up the phone mm-hmm. and it was somebody on the other end who just needed some help with something. Mm-hmm. And they'd reached out to me kind of randomly. Like I wouldn't necessarily be their go-to person, mm-hmm. but they reached out to me. And I sat there and had a conversation with him. I'm like, well, what the heck? I'm just sitting mm-hmm. here with my foot anyway, mm-hmm. you know? So I have the conver- I have this conversation with him. Before I know it, our conversation's over. And the pain in my foot <laughs> is like way, way better. Amazing. Amazing. You know? So was it that I got distracted long enough for the pain to subside? Or was it more just the fact that I was able to move some things along Get for over somebody yourself. else? Right? right. Because that's the golden rule. If right. you want something to move for you... Move it for Help someone else. Help somebody move. I love that. Move it for them. Yeah. And so that really becomes an important part of it. So thanks for bringing that up. Well, uh, yeah, I guess the ultimate is help someone else get unstuck. It's a good one. It is for totally. Sure. Yeah. And just to like come full circle before we head out, it's like understanding really what we're saying and being very cautious 
you know, removing those words, like we said, still and trying. This is another word. I had someone in who's like, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm like, let's just own that you're doing it. Yeah. Because if you keep saying you're trying, it's always going to feel like you're trying. Actually, you're doing great. You know, so yeah. like just do and whatever happens is going to happen. So I love that. It's like, it's actually getting real with the language and what we're saying and not adopting something that isn't so. Yeah. Yeah. It's just lazy. Yeah. It's lazy. Any so, last words? I think we've covered a lot here. There's certainly a million other ways mm-hmm. uh, that we can do this. Apparently, uh, there's September is personal growth month. September is personal growth month, so, so we'll have a lot to share about that. Yeah, that's coming up soon, and it, and getting unstuck is definitely absolutely important to that. So mm-hmm. you know, I think we'll do a whole one around um, the people that we hang out with. Uh, yeah, because yeah. we, we didn't really talk We're, about that today, yeah, we'll do but that. it is a little bit of a bigger conversation mm-hmm, mm-hmm. too. And I think there's some nuances to that that are really important. Yeah. And just to, to toss out there as an added benefit of getting quote unquote unstuck, go meet new people. Yes. Cause you just go talk to someone, go to a coffee shop, go to the party you don't want to go to and just have a, it can be so refreshing to just have a conversation with someone new. Yeah. Yeah, even people with that driver that tends to reach for Yeah, <laughs> like us. And speaking of the driver, once again, if you're interested in the Ultimate Life Tool Assessment, it's an amazing, completely holistic assessment of the human being. And it's, I, Nick and I have been trained in it in three levels. We love it. Um, check the show notes. You'll be able to click and purchase that assessment and it's really quite fabulous. Yeah, there that that is not just just to kind of shed a little bit of light on that. When somebody has that driver, it's not just being an introvert. Mm-mm. There's actually a much deeper layer yeah. to that, and mm-hmm. there's a way to manage that. That's totally. really productive. Absolutely, because um, I am an extremely introverted person, mm-hmm. uh, and you know we have a podcast. I'm out mm-hmm. there. We do things. Mm-hmm. I speak. You know, it's mm-hmm. totally doable to do that. But you do know, need to know how to manage. You need that. to know how to fuel it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we can we can definitely talk about that if that shows up up in Mm -hmm. your assessment or whatever it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for being here. Illumination podcast with Nick and Kizma. And if there's someone that, you know, would appreciate this episode, please share it. Maybe they're a little stuck. Maybe they're a little stuck. (laughs) Like, you know, no offense. You don't want to like insult them. Hey dude, I thought you were stuck, but do send this over. You should listen to this. (laughs) Take out should just say like, Oh, I thought this might make your day better. (laughs) That's so much more graceful. Thank you. Yeah. And as always, we very much appreciate you and much love. Namaste. Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste. Namaste.